Hello there. Recently I looked at the 90s video games of a popular franchise that first graced our television screens in the 1980s. I'll leave a card in the top right corner for my video about the Simpsons games on the Sega Mega Drive. But today we're looking at 90s games of a franchise that first graced our bookshelves in the 80s. This time on the Sony PlayStation. And we're diving into a world where magic, humour and satire collide. A world resting on the backs of four giant elephants who in turn stand on the shell of a massive turtle swimming through space. Yes, we're talking about Terry Pratchett's Discworld. For those of you who aren't familiar, Discworld is a fantasy universe that began as a series of novels by the brilliant Terry Pratchett. Filled with quirky characters, sharp wit and endless parody of our own world, and with over 40 books, countless radio, TV and movie adaptations, as well as board games and even collectible stamps, it's safe to say that Discworld has become one of the most beloved series in modern fantasy literature. But did you know that Discworld also found its way into the realm of video games? That's right, in the 90s, three point-and-click adventure games brought the humour and absurdity of Discworld to life on our screens and consoles. In this video, the second instalment of my series, Franchise Focus, we're going to take a nostalgic trip through these games. Discworld, Discworld 2 and Discworld Noir, all released on the Sony PlayStation as well as one or two other systems. So grab your wizard's hat and your luggage and let's see if these games have stood the test of time or if they're just a load of old hooey. Our journey begins with the original Discworld game, released in 1995, developed by Perfect Entertainment and published by Psygnosis. This point and click adventure game was based loosely on Pratchett's novels, specifically Guards Guards. Players take on the role of Rincewind, an incompetent wizard voiced by none other than Eric Idle of Monty Python fame. In fact, the entire cast reads like a who's who of British comedy, with NPCs voiced by John Pertwee, Rob Brydon, Kate Robbins and Tony Robinson. Back to our protagonist, Rincewind. He's more about running away than saving the day, and with him at the helm, you can bet this isn't your typical hero's journey. The game is packed with classic Discworld humour, from sarcastic dialogue to bizarre puzzles that only make sense in a world as odd as the disc. Rincewind has been tasked with finding a way to prevent a dragon from terrorising the city of Ankh-Morpork, but despite evidence of its attacks, many of the people you meet on your journey are unwilling to believe its existence. I mean, they have a point. Dragons don't exist, do they? The Arch-Chancellor of Unseen University handpicks Rincewind to collect all the necessary items needed for the task. But you won't be alone. Rincewind's trusty sidekick, Luggage, is along for the ride. Good thing too, as you're going to need somewhere to store everything you buy, steal and borrow during your adventure. Discworld wasn't just confined to the PlayStation, it also made its way onto the PC, Sega Saturn and even the Apple Macintosh. The game received positive reviews for its humour and voice acting, although some players found the puzzles to be notoriously difficult. Let's just say you might need a magic spell or two to get through this one. Failing that, a quick search on Google will provide you with plenty of walkthrough guides. Not that I used any. Huh? What? Despite the tricky puzzles, Discworld cast a spell on many fans of the series. It may be over 25 years old, but it's still a game worth exploring. The cartoony visuals mean that it doesn't look as dated as some of the other early releases on the PlayStation. There's still a lot of fun to be had here, whether you're a fan of the novels, point and click adventure games, or just have nostalgia for this one in particular, it comes highly recommended. The game received positive reviews from critics, and the following year, a sequel was released. Let's take a look at that one, shall we? Hello! 
anybody home? Following the success of the first game, Perfect Entertainment returned in 1996 with Discworld 2 Missing Presumed, or Mortality Bites, as it was known over in North America. Once again published by Cygnosis, this sequel saw the return of our favourite bumbling wizard, Rincewind, who's now been roped into solving the mystery of death's disappearance. I know that's not just a metaphor, death has literally gone missing, and it's up to Rincewind, and you the player, to find him. The developers didn't just stick with the old formula, they levelled up. Discworld 2 featured improved visuals, smoother animations, and a much more refined interface. But don't worry, the humour was as sharp as ever, with Eric Idle once again lending his voice to Rincewind and a host of new characters adding to the chaos, this time voiced by a returning Rob Brydon and Kate Robbins, and they were joined by another British comedy legend in Nigel Planer. Like its predecessor, Discworld 2 was available on multiple platforms including the PC, Sega Saturn and of course the Sony PlayStation. The game was well received, particularly for its voice acting and clever writing, though some critics pointed out that the puzzles, while slightly easier than the first game, could still be head scratchers. And Google wasn't launched until 1998, so players had to work these things out for themselves, or possibly ask Jeeves. I promised you nostalgia, didn't I? For me personally, this was my first exposure to the series, as I remember playing some of this game on a demo disc that came free with some magazine or other. I fell in love with it. I found Rincewind's quirky yet witty one-liners hilarious. I enjoyed the characters, the world, and the fact I could play a point-and-click adventure game on my PlayStation. Not long after becoming obsessed with the Discworld games, I developed similar feelings for another point-and-click adventure series, Broken Sword. And don't worry, a video on them is in the pipeline. Anyway, there are many memorable characters here, from the three old gits who live in the alley, Old Foul Ron, Henry Coffin and Duckman, to the hippie students slash research assistants who you meet in the university's high energy facility, particularly Skaz, who sounds like one of the Beatles, and Mad Drongo, voiced by Nigel Planer. This character is basically Neil from The Young Ones, decked out in brightly coloured wizard's garb. It's like a, a manifestation of cosmic energy. Like the first game in the series, this one is great to go back to. The jokes will still make you laugh, the puzzles will still, well, puzzle you, and the concept of death not being around to collect the souls of the recently departed lends itself to an intriguing plot. In fact, I think Family Guy did an episode based on a similar premise. Playing Discworld 2 feels like taking a walk through Ankmore Pork's fog, but be warned, even the fog there has a mind of its own. That was quite a dark line, and if you like your games dark, you'll love the next one. I want to be the first person in the game to say f Hmm, not one of your better ideas, I'm afraid. Our final stop on this magical journey takes us once more to the dark and mysterious streets of Ankh-Morpork. And games don't get much more darker or mysterious than Discworld Noir. Released in 1999 on Windows and PlayStation, it was developed once again by Perfect Entertainment and published by GT Interactive. This time the developers took a different approach, swapping the bright, colourful world of the previous games for a grittier, film noir inspired atmosphere. And not just that, instead of the cartoony 2D graphics of the previous instalments, we now have a 3D aesthetic that's somewhat reminiscent of Final Fantasy VII. Say goodbye to Rincewind and hello to Luton, the disc's first and only private investigator. The game follows Luton as he navigates a web of intrigue, murder and of course dark humour. Unlike the previous two games, Discworld Noir had a more serious tone, though it never strayed too far from Pratchett's signature wit. Of course, just like the first two games, this one is filled with conversations with memorable characters and puzzles that must be solved in order to progress the story. 
The game was praised for its intriguing story and atmospheric design. Though it didn't reach the same level of commercial success as its predecessors, once again we have a stellar voice cast with Rob Brydon stepping up to take on the role of our main character, Luton, supported by the returning Kate Robbins and Nigel Planer. Plus another British comedy favourite, Robert Llewellyn. That means across this series of games we've had the voices of Doctor Who, Baldrick, Neil, Crichton and Keith from Marion and Jeff. What do you mean you've never heard of it? Anyway, despite its darker tone, Discworld Noir remains a fan favourite. Often regarded as a cult classic among adventure game enthusiasts, it was a fitting conclusion to the Discworld gaming trilogy, bringing something new to the table while staying true to the spirit of Pratchett's world. If you've got a taste for mystery and a fondness for sarcastic dialogue, Discworld Noir will leave you feeling like a true gumshoe. Just watch out for any rogue spells along the way. And there you have it, a journey through the weird and wonderful world of Discworld games on the PlayStation. From the zany antics of Rincewind in Discworld and Discworld 2, to the darker, more serious tone of Discworld Noir. These games captured the spirit of Terry Pratchett's universe in a way that few adaptations have. These games may not have achieved mainstream success, but for those of us who love Pratchett's work, they're treasures, relics of a time when point-and-click adventures ruled the world, and humour was just as important as gameplay. In a way, they're like Discworld itself, an odd, wonderful world that we're lucky to have visited. So whether you're a seasoned Discworld veteran or a newbie to the series, these games are well worth a visit. Just remember, on the disc, nothing is ever quite as it seems. Thanks for joining me on this nostalgic trip through the Discworld games. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing if you're new. And let me know in the comments what's your favourite Discworld book or game. Or maybe you've got a favourite Pratchett quote that always makes you laugh. I'd love to hear from you. As hinted at in the video, I will be looking at the Broken Sword series for the next franchise focus. However, if there's a franchise from the Mega Drive or the PlayStation that you'd like me to take a look at, let me know in the comments and I'll maybe add it to my list. Until next time, stay safe and keep gaming. Do you think it could be the home of the dragons? Don't be ridiculous. Dragons don't exist. All my life I've wanted to see dragons. Hmm? <laughs> I think that we could... Yeah!